So hi guys, if you watched any of our 100 episodes on TOA this week at Yanomize, you'll know Ray, first of all, works for Yanomize, edited most of those, and also he's the bike guy, and he wrapped his Yamaha motorbike in chrome turquoise, the same as I wrapped my Lamborghinis. So Ray started working for Yanomize in 2021. However, I did actually meet him in 2017 at the HRN event in Mayfair. He even showed me a comment that he said one day he would wrap a car at Yanomize, along with loads of other comments. He was a fan. So let's fast forward to 2023, and he's brought his first car to Yanomize to wrap. The journey between then and now has been, um, we'll call it an interesting one. I just went ahead and bought the cheapest Nissan 350Z in the UK, my first car. Some of you may know, in 2021, I got a job in a place called Yenemize. It's kind of the UK dream factory for some of the craziest supercars, craziest raps, and big celebrity names. I've always loved cars, so to get the opportunity to be around some of the rarest ones on the planet is surreal to say the least. That is ridiculous. However, I'd always arrived to work on my bike, so I was kind of considered the bike guy but I was far from that. And honestly, having a bike just meant I could move around without having to spend loads of money on petrol and other car type of expenses. But I felt like getting a car was long overdue and it was time I challenged myself. So I was on the search for my first car, but there was only really one car I had my eyes on. The Nissan 350Z. A pretty loud, fairly uneconomical, wildly obnoxious, fuel guzzling JDM sports car. I mean, what's there not to love about it? There's always been a soft spot in my heart for Japanese cars with the likes of the R33, the NSX, the Supra, being some of the first cars to really capture my interest in cars as a whole. But they were always so damn expensive. And that's when I remember the 350Z. The perfect car for a 21 year old that lives in an area with strict emission rules on a budget. I have been consistently searching for the past couple of weeks, finding some hopeful examples of 350Zs that weren't too expensive and weren't too wrecked out. But the cars are usually sold really quickly. Literally every post I had saved of a decent example was either sold the next day or a seller of the car wasn't responding to my messages. But then I found one. I saw this listing 12 minutes after it was posted. And at the time I knew how to act fast. I messaged the seller asking for the number and sat around waiting expecting to hear nothing because that's what sellers apparently like to do but this time it was available but not for long the 350z was listed at two thousand pounds way below the normal market value for these cars i was so gassed and i finally thought i hit the jackpot but there was a catch there was a list of problems but the worst problem of all is that it was non-runner meaning well it didn't run and better yet, the car was in Bournemouth, over 100 miles away. So this was already turned into a bit of a headache. This car was likely to get sold quick, so I had to act fast. I told him I'd send him the cash now for it and get a recovery truck to him. And he agreed to make the sale happen. I was buying this thing basically off a couple of photos. Other than that, I had no idea what I was going to expect. And with my amazing bartering skills, I managed to knock off 100 pounds. Yeah, that's called cool business, bruv. I'm a hustler, ain't he? So, here it was. My Nissan 350Z. On the back of a truck, in the middle of the night, what have I got myself into? I was a bit nervous coming into this, I ain't gonna lie, but I pushed on, contacted the right people to help me out of this project and dived head first. We popped open the bonnet and upon first sight, it seemed okay. Nothing really leaking, everything somewhat intact. And to be honest, looked a lot fresher than what I thought a car with 100,000 miles on it would have. Like, honestly, considering how old it was, like I was kind of in disbelief. I tried starting it and as previously advertised, it didn't wanna run. The engine would run for a second or two until suddenly cutting out. So I thought maybe, it was the throttle body issue that the seller noted. That's right, in the original description of the listing, the seller noted that it was a non-runner, it was in limp mode, and that the throttle body had a problem. So I kind of just thought that was a problem and we can buy a new throttle body and call it a day and then I have a working new Sentry 350Z. But then my friend said something. I noticed that the car was not wirelessly locking the key. I don't think much of it, but my friend said that the battery in his key died, his car wouldn't start. Very similar situation to what I'm having now. This is because most cars come with factory immobilizers that require the key to be powered in order for the car to start. He said we should try and replace the key battery, so that's exactly what we did. We opened it up, we unscrewed it, cleaned it a little bit, and I happened to have some very similar batteries to the one that was in the key, except the numbers on the batteries were a bit different. I don't know. We just stuck them in, and we went back to the car, and this happened. The moment of truth of a quick fix. This might not work. This works, this is still. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's a really good sign. Right. Oh. Keep it rolling. One take, one take. We're the one take boys. There's no way, bro. This guy finessed it with a battery. I was saying to this man on camera, bro, I wanted to be able to work in it. If this is the only problem there was, it's a bit dead, isn't it? But hey, at least it's still. I'm so pessimistic right now, but I have to be, bro, because I'm shook. Nah. Hey. Right. 
No way, I actually saw it. That is. Yeah, I mean, it started. It trolled, but it started. I couldn't really believe it, to be honest. The fact that I was sitting in a supposedly working 350Z that I bought for £1,900. To say I was gassed is an understatement. I look way, bro. Bro! It was this man here, yeah, that, that finessed it, bro. The bike guy knows about cars. Bro, that is unbelievable. But I definitely didn't want to get too hyped up too quick because quickly after, yeah, engine lights. The car also lost power and it had gone into limp mode. <laughs> This happens when the car detects a problem and it does this to protect anything from getting damaged internally. So the next job was to tackle the throttle body. But first we had to take it out of the garage. And I'd say that went pretty smoothly. And to be fair, it was pretty easy to get to. If you know anything about throttle body, it basically lets air into the engine to allow it to ignite. And I don't really know the science of it, but I kind of get it. If you don't get it, then too bad. And lo and behold, a load of poopy carbon buildup. I assumed the little disc that opens and shuts to let air in was getting stuck on the debris inside there. So I was told that I can use braking clutch cleaner to just basically try to get as much of it off as possible. And most of it did come off. So I started putting it back together. And now for round two. It was working, and this time it wasn't going into limp mode. It was actually working, but still, it wasn't perfect. Um, it doesn't look great underneath. I ain't gonna lie. It looks a bit brown, but nothing crazy if I'm honest, broski. Brakes do sound a bit, um, I think that's normal, but hey, who knows? It looks operational enough. Under here is a bit Ushkins, and a lot of this has been treated with um, rust paint thing thingy so that's cool but as you can see the exhaust system is completely brand new this is shining that looks healthy this thing looks like my great grand aunt's toenail this is the w brace this thing is about to disintegrate but luckily this thing isn't essential so if that did happen i wouldn't be too fast there was also some bolts missing on the belly of the car meaning it was hanging real low down but honestly there was a lot less wrong with the car than i thought there'd be at least nothing major however there was one thing i noticed that had been annoying me since i got the car one thing that we're gonna fix right now yeah so when you open the boot i mean this happens so you push the button and it only comes off a little bit and now you're stuck. It won't come up. What you actually have to do is you have to hold it down and pull it at the same time to make sure the latch is just staying unreleased and then it will come up. So once you pull it up, the struts kind of push it up by itself. So it's cool, but it just won't pop out properly because of these little things here. Now, these are the release springs, I think, or something like that. They just pop up the bonnet. So when you open it, it pops up enough for it to just open. They're kind of known for like flattening out over time. So they don't have enough like springage to like spring it up, basically. What's cool about these is you can pop them out just like this. Bosh. And you can take this plastic cover off, put some coins in the top of the spring just to make it a bit longer so it can pop out properly. So yeah, let's see if that works. <laughs> RIP Your Majesty the Queen. Thank you for helping me with this project. And now that one is in as well. Close this and for the moment of truth. For two one. Nope, never mind. Still fed. Yeah, you know what this means? This means more coins. More money. And for the moment of truth, let's see if this works. Fixed. Lovely. So that's 10p spent instead of 100 pounds spent. That's like one of those small little fixes that gets me really happy. It's like 10p, are you mad? To fix a whole boot. Crazy. And with that fixed, I think the 350 now deserved the clean. It looked like it had been sitting for a good while, bits of algae, sap, and insects all over it. So we decided to jet wash the whole exterior, but to say that was satisfying would be an understatement. And with that out of the way, it was time to take the car to Yanomise. However, I actually had to take my colleague Sai in the passenger seat because I don't actually have my license yet. So now we're all set. Let's go see what Yan thinks of the car. So Ray, who works for me, media editor, said he's bought a car and he wants to wrap it. I want to see what it is. I know Ray got a mad deal on this and thought there was something wrong with it. And then there wasn't. And he's been talking about it for about two months now. And he's like, I'm going to bring it here today. And I know he needs L plates as well. So I think Sai's with him. <laughs> 
because he hasn't got a driving license, so he needs someone alongside him. I ain't gonna lie, this actually feels like an episode of Pit My Ride. You know, Pit My Ride where they bring the car and you gotta do stuff to it. Look at his L plate sticking up. Alright. Okay. Look at the old OZ racing camera. <laughs> Hello, Raymundo. Hi. Yes, it's a bit different to the two wheels. Cobwebs here and there, it's a bit rough, but um... You pretty much, let's be straight, you pretty much stole this though, didn't you? Yeah, I guess there's one way of saying it. The story, the story with this about the key and then you just yeah. have to change your battery and then there was nothing really wrong with the car. It was basically fair, I'm not gonna lie. It's alright, it does the job. I don't think it's a very adequate first car at all, I won't lie to you. But Insurance is probably gonna be a nightmare. Yeah, it's a bit of a killer, but I thought it would be cool. calipers. Yeah, Brembo. 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 Wheels. Forged wheels as well, man. With the L plate. Come on, not passed yet, coming soon. Uh, I think it looks great. I think it's, to be fair, it's actually a really nice car. Is it missing something on the front bumper? Ah! So there was a little ugly splitter on there and whoever previously had it thought, let me just screw right into the bumper to put it on there and I took it off. So now we have some aesthetic screw holes. In my honest front. opinion, Grind is probably not the best first car, but it's actually a really nice car and this car would do really well. If you put a nice wrap on this, or you give this a real good clean and get rid of the cobwebs, if you wanted to sell this, I think you'll make some serious money. And yeah. I think people really want this. Do you remember we done for Wrap My Banger, the 300? 300, which I love. I love JDM cars. I'd throw the bike in a bin over this every day. Every day. Really? I, I, bro, I, I love like cars. your bike. Your bike's nice. It's and nice. the advantage is you can whip through traffic. You're still late for work. <laughs> I don't know how you can, I don't know how we use the excuse of being late for work when you're on a bike. And you can't say traffic. Ray is the king of excuses. Nah. Him, Ray, and <laughs> Dion are all the king of excuses. Not even. Right, well, listen, you work here, so I don't need to go and show you colors. You can go and choose whatever color you want. If you want to wrap it, you can wrap it here. We're gonna start wrapping here again. No, we're not. But Ray can wrap his bike here, his car here even. Anyway, I think it's really nice. Um, cool story, to be fair to him. It's always good to do your homework, you know? I mean, you go and buy a car and you think there's loads of things wrong with it. However, you found something that was just the battery, wasn't it? It's about 20 people back of batteries. And just fired up. Bang. Genius. Easy. There you go. See, he's worked here long enough. He's, he's learned, he's learned. You go wrap it, choose a color, and I'm going to do some work. Just so you know, every time you accelerate and do that, yeah? Petrol gave. Oh, yeah, literally, you can see it. <laughs> I mean, it's not even a joke, you literally see it. Uh, my son's got it all to look forward to as well when he gets his first car. He's gonna think his dad's funding it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. So I've wrapped bikes before, but I've never actually wrapped a full car. So this is the first of me. This is gonna be interesting. Gone for the Hexus Purple. I think it will look very good. I, I wanted to go for like a dark, colorful color. I just wanted it to be kind of low key. So I think this will fare beautifully on this beautiful 350Z. Let's go. I mean, purple is nice, I'd say. The grey is nice too, but I think the purple is really going to add something to it. And if you're wondering why I'm sitting on the car, because I can. But we're going to carry on. We're going to finish wrapping it tomorrow, hopefully. So let's get to wrapping. I was documenting this process on my Instagram, posting some of the photos of the car when I got this message. Somebody made me an offer I could not turn down. I asked Ian what I should do, and he said, If it was me, I would just sell it. So for that reason, If you remember at the start of the video, I said that these cars can go for three to 8K. And after everything I spent on it, from putting it on a recovery truck from Bournemouth, getting MOT, insurance, and spending money on vinyl that I didn't really use, I was still able to make a profit out of it. It's unfortunate, I know, but it's the right thing to do. I can't lie. Like I said, I cannot turn down this offer but I'm sure we might be seeing this in the future. Fortunately though, it's only a bonnet, so it's not too much of a hassle. But the money from this, I'm gonna be buying a new car. Uh, that'll be over my personal channel. We'll be doing a little project over there. That'll be quite interesting. It served me very well for the few months I had it. It served me as a great first car, but it is time to go. From buying this car blind to it arriving on a trailer in the middle of the night to being able to fix it and start it up, I must say this whole process has been one to remember. And to say I had a Nissan 350Z as a first car is honestly an honor. It also goes to show how you can make money if you keep a sharp eye out for these type of online car listings. But anyways, I'm looking forward to seeing what I can get as my second first car, so stay tuned to see what car I buy next.